Our next speaker is ready and waiting to come to the stage. So I'd like to welcome to talk about five ways to speed up your game development process on your way to hyper casual success. Uh, we've got Shai Sasson from Crazy Labs. So uh, if we could welcome Shai to the stage, just while um, uh, while Shai is coming to the camera, I'd just like to remind everyone that we're tweeting. You can use the hashtag PG Connects. Uh, on social media, please do share your journey there. And then as you're uh, listening to the talk and uh, and having questions, no doubt, please drop them into the Q&A box at the bottom of the of the Zoom window. Uh, in about 20 minutes, we'll um, once the uh, the talk's underway, we'll, um, uh, we'll we'll curate those questions, put some of those questions to our speaker and uh, hopefully answer them live. Of course, if we uh, aren't able to get to your question, which can happen, um, then we can uh, maybe take to Discord or whatever after that. So I can see that Shai is in the window now. Shai, do you want to um, uh, unmute there so we can... Uh, we can? Hi, how are you doing? Hey, hey, you're doing great. How about you? Thanks. Yeah, so all right, thank you. Yeah, not, not bad. It's the, it's We're halfway through the show. It's going pretty well. Where are you Zooming to us uh, today? I am in Tel, Tel Aviv, in Israel. Fantastic. So you're a couple of hours uh, hours ahead of me. I'm, yeah. I'm still only on my uh, on my second cup of coffee. So look, here's what we'll do. I'll um, fade into the background, and if people have questions for you, then they can um, drop them in the box. But I'll come back in about twenty minutes and uh, and help you curate those. Take all the time you need, and uh, yeah, over to you. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna share my screen quickly and uh, start the presentation. I would like to thank everyone for joining this uh, talk, and uh, today we'll talk about five ways that can help you speed up your development process on your way to uh, making your next hyper casual hit. Um, a few things that uh, we're gonna talk about is a, a bit about Crazy Labs, uh, a very short brief introduction to hyper casual. Uh, some of the timelines that we're looking at when developing a hyper casual game. And then we're going uh, to deep dive into the tips. If we have time, we'll do a quick summary and uh, a few questions. Um, as well. Um, so for those who don't know Crazy Labs yet, Crazy Labs is a top three uh, publisher and game developer uh, worldwide. We've actually recently almost reached 4 billion uh, uh, downloads and have over 100 million uh, monthly active users. Uh, Crazy Labs is actually divided into three labs. Uh, the biggest lab is the Hyper Casual Lab, where we publish and develop hyper casual games. The second lab is uh, developing and publishing casual games. Um, some of the games that we've uh, developed and published are games like uh, Jumanji together with Sony Pictures, Charlie's Angels, uh, Super Stylist, and many, many others. And the third lab, which is a secret lab that develops very secret indie games. And so myself, Shai, I am a senior publishing manager at Crazy Labs. I work with studios and developers from the development ideation prototyping part until the game is ready to be published through the testing process until the game is ready and hits the, the charts. And I'm always looking for talented studios and developers who are either looking to enter the hyper casual uh, genre or are looking to discuss how to get your next uh, hyper casual uh, prototype to uh, being a top chart game. And so I've entered a very quick brief about hyper casual and introduction. I'm pretty sure most of you already know this, uh, but I felt that this is a great introduction to the tip that we're looking to uh, discuss today. Um, so what is hyper casual? Um, the games are very simple to understand uh, and very satisfying as well. They are targeting a very mass audience, meaning that I can play it and my 60 year old, uh, uh, daughter can play it and uh, my 65 year old mom can play the same game exactly. So we're actually targeting a very, very wide, uh, big audience. Uh, the game is uh, highly uh, replayable since they are very simply to, uh, simple to understand. They are easy to monetize and this production uh, time is very quick. Um, comparing hyper casual games to let's say maybe casual games or even mid core games where uh, in most cases, you'll develop the games over months and even sometimes years until the first time that you test the game and see how the uh, players are reacting. In hyper casual, the, uh, the prototyping part until the game is published is very, very quick. I've gathered uh, two scenarios, best case scenario and then worst case scenario on the processing 
a process uh, part of how you prototype your game until it's published. Um, and here's a great example. So in most cases, the developers uh, will create a prototype. The prototype will simply be a gameplay video. They probably don't even have a build yet, um, but they'll simply create an ad of the gameplay and test it for CTR to simply understand, is this game marketable? Um, the production of this uh, prototype uh, CTR video takes probably around one week or, or even less than that. Until then, you set up a test, and in less than a week or so, you already have the first results of your uh, prototype. You can understand if this uh, game is appealing, if players understand it, and only then you move to the second step, which is a CPI test, where you create a build in the store. A few days later, you're able to really understand, okay, what is the CPI? And if we understand that this has the potential to become a hit, only then invest time in making more levels and a bit more uh, content to the game to measure the day one retention. We at Crazy Labs only test for day one retention. We're not looking at this stage at day three or day seven. You should only invest your time on the first day after the install, the day one retention. And if we meet the KPIs, we simply start scaling the game to reach the top charts. So as you can see, the overall best case scenario is about four weeks until your game reaches uh, to be uh, in the top chart. Moving to the second uh, worst case scenario. So you've invested about one week or less in creating a prototype for CTR test, just gameplay video uh, mining you and set it up. If this fails, you cut and move to the next prototype. So you save a lot of time, you save a lot of resources and very, very quickly you're able to understand the KPIs of the game and if you should invest more or move to the next game and try prototype more, more uh, potential games. So after this uh, uh, very brief introduction, moving to the five tips that we've all gathered today to discuss. So the first one is the ideation part. When you're sitting down and you're thinking, what will be our next uh, prototype? You need to find something to rely on. Maybe it's a trend, maybe it's a viral trend, um, maybe it's a trend based on uh, very successful other hyper casual games. Uh, but when you're thinking about what is this trend, you need to make sure that it's appealing to a very wide variety of audience. Make sure that it's not a trend. This might be very trendy, but it appeals to a very niche audience and not many people will understand it. Um, so when looking at this example here, this is a, a, the CTR test of our latest hit. Uh, uh, scope people, which is currently number one in many countries. And um, you can see that it's based on a trend that is very viral, sculpturing people out of clay. It's very simple to understand. Just from the first few seconds, you immediately understand what is the, the gameplay about. And it has the mass appeal uh, that we're looking at. Moving to the next step, with the uh, next tip, which is the data. And I think this is very critical, you know, when you're creating a prototype, you need to rely on the data in order to understand if your prototype has the potential to become a hit, um, but not specifically just for your uh, prototype that you're testing. You need to get the data in order to perhaps apply it for your next future games as well. So you need to work with the data in order to really understand uh, and optimize your prototyping uh, phase. And um, this example uh, I'm showing you here, um, our click dashboard created by Crazy Labs. And when we created this dashboard, actually, uh, we looked at two things. Uh, first, for us to see what's going on with all of our studios and have a perspective of it. But for the studio itself uh, to have uh, almost real-time data on their tests. So for example, let's say you're testing uh, for CTR. You need to really understand in real time, can you get the CTR of each creative? Do you know what is the CPC? If you're moving to CPI test, maybe you're testing more than one creative. So let's say you're testing a creative with a fail moment and creative without, without a fail moment. Are you able to get the data uh, on each creative? What is the CPI per creative? What, how much uh, traffic did each creative drive? Perhaps one drove more creative than the other. You can take these action items and really understand to how to optimize your prototyping, prototyping process as well as implement them in future games. So working with the data and 
able to receive the, the, this data when you're working with a publisher is very, very critical for you as a developer to save time, save resources, and optimize your prototyping process until you find your next hyper casual hit. Uh, the third is gamification. So if your game is based on a trend, uh, you need to make sure that you're able to keep the fun of uh, the, the concept of the trend and make it as close as possible to the trend itself. In this example here, you see the first storyboard of tie-dye, which is one of our biggest uh, hits over the past year. And so when we approached this trend and we said, okay, let's uh, make uh, tie-dye as a game, uh, we actually pinpoint what are the steps that someone who's making a tie-dye in their backyard or in their uh, house would like to experience. Once we pinpoint that, um, we try to make sure that the first prototype will be as close as possible to uh, the, the steps and the trend itself. By making sure uh, uh, this, you can convert the viewers who are watching your ad to players who would like to get this experience. Um, another great example is uh, Soap Cutting, one of the first uh, ASMR games that we published of, um, around a, a year or so ago. Uh, we actually brought Soap to the office and tried to cut soap. And although it was a very fun experience, it was very, very messy. So we understood that players would like to get this experience without all the mess around it. Same thing for tie-dye. Therefore, we try to make it as close as possible to the trend and the original experience. Uh, fourth is the publisher itself. So when you're creating a prototype, you need to make sure that your publisher is able to take this prototype if successful and successfully publish it. So you need to make sure that this publisher has an experience in uh, taking prototypes and games, hyper casual games to the top charts. And you need to make sure that it ha he has multiple uh, successes um, in hyper casual uh, hits, as well as the genre itself. So if you're creating a specific genre, sub genre in hyper casual games, you need to make sure that this publisher has the experience and has uh, uh, previous hyper casual hits, which are similar to what you're looking to, to achieve. Uh, technology is something which is very critical. Um, publishing, successfully publishing and maintaining hyper casual games in the top charts rely on a very, very big infrastructure of technology that can help optimize the process and gather insights on how to uh, continue to optimize your game and make sure that it stays in the top chart for as long as possible with a very big profit. So you need to make sure that the publisher has this infrastructure of technology. And this is not developed in a month or two, even not in a year, it's developed over years. So you need to make sure that your publisher has this kind of infrastructure of technology and it was developed over years to help you make sure that your game will be a hit. Um, so communication um, is also very critical. You need to make sure that you're able to communicate with your publishing manager, receive feedback, but not only from the publishing manager, uh, perhaps you need to discuss something with a game designer or producer or a marketing manager, or even get some assistance from tech artist or UI or 3D artist in order to um, uh, help you with some uh, issues that you have while prototyping your game. So making sure that your communication with the publisher and the publishing manager is fully transparent, you're able to receive the feedback, but also provide feedback and ask questions about the process and the prototype itself. And last, in is the growth. And actually growth brings me to the fifth and last uh, point. Uh, today we know that hyper casual games uh, hit the top charts very quickly and stay there for a long period of time. Uh, looking back historically, we've saw that they come up very quick and then drop very quick. Today it's totally different. Uh, today we know that hyper casual games are able to stay in the top charts for a very, very long time. You need to make sure that the publisher that you're working with has this experience in prototyping, creating, and publishing multiple hyper casual hits that are staying in the top chart for a long uh, period of time. And so uh, here at Crazy Labs, uh, we've already uh, created a live ops team that is working together with the, pub with the studios in order to maintain the game and continuously updating the game, updating the game to make sure that it's optimized and can make the profit uh, for a long period of time. Here, uh, I've put examples of uh, some of the games that we've published over the past year and even years ago. 
And if you notice, these games are still in the top charts and they're still gener generating nice amount of money for the developers uh, together working with the live ops team and the developer itself to maintain the game for a very long period of time. Uh, so what we've discussed uh, so far, uh, we need to make sure that you have uh, an ideation part, which is based on either on a trend or a, a viral trend, which is simple to understand and it's appealing to a very wide audience. You know, make sure that you have the ability to receive the data and work with the data uh, to optimize your process in creating your next hyper casual hit. Uh, we want to convert the viewers uh, to players. So trying to keep uh, your concept based on the original trend as close as possible without you know, all the mess around it, giving them the best experience. You need to make sure that you have the right publisher with the right experience that can help you prototype, test and publish your next hyper casual hit, as well as invest your time wisely. Today we know hyper casual games are able to stay in the charts and make money for a very long period of time, uh, very differently from um, uh, a few years ago. Um, so for those who don't know, we recently launched our Endless campaign, uh, which you can get immediately cash prizes uh, uh, when prototyping a game based on a viral trend. Uh, you can simply get immediate $500 just for uh, getting approved to test your game based on a trend and get up to $15,000 once you meet the KPIs that are needed. So a very good opportunity for a lot of developers to jump in and get some cash uh, to continue helping them uh, develop their games. And last thing that I would like to uh, point out is the Crazy Hubs. Uh, so uh, Crazy Labs um, uh, launched uh, our Crazy Hubs, which is our accelerators for developers and studios who are looking either to enter the hyper casual scene or to get more experience. And uh, we've launched already our Israeli uh, Tel Aviv based uh, Crazy Hub as well as Mumbai, India. Um, and we're uh, giving facilities, uh, mentorships and even funding uh, to help you uh, prototype uh, uh, and uh, get more experience in the hyper casual scene. And um, as I said, we already have our, our Mumbai and Tel Aviv uh, accelerators, but I know that we have people here listening to my talk from all around the world. And I have to give you a very good tip that we are going to expand and open more accelerators, crazy hubs all around the world. So stay tuned. Maybe the next one will be very close to you and you can get um, some of the things that uh, we are able to provide. Things that we're going, uh, uh, highlights of the things that we're doing in the crazy hubs is onboarding to hyper casual games gamifying a trend, gaming, game design, uh, marketing assistance, creatives, user experience, level finals, and a lot, a lot more that can really help you guys uh, and make it to uh, the next step. And I think this actually concludes uh, my presentation. I really enjoyed, although I know that uh, I can't see everyone there, but I'm pretty sure that uh, 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 you guys already also enjoyed this and it was uh, beneficial for you. I'm available. Uh, you can you can have my email here. I'm also available in the meet to match. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. That's perfect, Shai. Thank you very much. Round of applause from everyone here. You can you can only hear me, but I'm sure everyone is doing the same. Um, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> really, really an interesting talk. And I've got a few questions for you myself. Um, some people have supplied some questions, which I'll get to in a moment. But I just wanted to say, um, that that endless initiative that you've uh, that you've started there sounds great. So just so that I understand, if there are developers in the audience watching this now and they may be working on a hyper casual game, they submit a video and that's all. That's the first step. That's all they need to do first of all. And you guys will take a look at it and that's how you enter that process. So the first thing that you need, they need to do is find a viral trend that they want to base their hyper casual prototype on. Uh, take the link to the trend as well as a gameplay video based on this trend and simply send it to us. Once we approved it to test, they immediately get $500 just for getting approved. And then they start the testing process. Once they uh, reach KPIs, they can get a lot more money, up to $15,000 or even more. And they can submit as many games based on viral trends as they want and simply either find the next hyper casual hit, but also get some funding on the way. 
that's perfect. So I know that um, from our demographics that maybe about 70% of our audience here at Pocket Gamer Connects are game creators. And I know that in some of our earlier talks this morning, there were questions from developers about how best to approach publishers. So this seems like a great way to approach Crazy Labs and um, uh, and and share that, you know, and, and, and maybe, have, as you say, have an opportunity there to earn some money while, while working on a prototype. So that's great. So I'm going to bring you some questions now, if that's all right, Shai. So firstly, um, someone's just observed that... Um, uh, Crazy Labs, of course, have those great uh, ASMR games, the things like the soap cutting, which is which is great. I've, I've got that myself on my phone. It's a very, very cool game. Um, the question is, is that the only type of games that you focus on now? Or are you looking at any other genre? So that's a great question. And yes, we are looking for very va uh, variety of hyper casual games. Uh, we do have a, a good amount of uh, ASMR games. And we saw that we started kind of this trend and uh, we started receiving a lot of prototypes based on ASMR. Uh, but uh, we are publishing different hyper casual games from ASMR to runner games to simulations and arcade games. So feel free to uh, submit any kind of game that you feel uh, would be uh, something that you'd like to discuss and receive some feedback uh, as well as uh, publish it. Uh, I'm just going to leap into the chat here. We've got a question here from Hitesh who says, um, uh, how does the publishing process work in this case? Is it similar to book publishing where you get an advance and then pay royalties on the game sales? What, what, just what's your model for, um, for for publishing with a developer? So we, we're very flexible on how we work with studios. It really depends on the partnership with the studio and the communication with the studio. And I think communication was one of the points that I raised out, which is critical for a developer to, to work with a publisher. It can be either a very close partnership where you can get some funding on the testing process as well as uh, uh, revenue share from a published game. Uh, you can also have a, a, a full ready prototype ready for testing and we can start discussing it. But we provide more than just that. We do provide uh, assistance and guidance on the testing process. Uh, it can start from uh, me as a, as a publishing manager discussing the prototype with the, with the developer. It can be a game designer that answer, enters the, the chat and helps as well as many, many other resources that us as Crazy Labs are able to provide the studios. That's great, thank you. Um, so uh, Johannes has a question here that says, what are your recommendations how to set up and run a CTR test? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, the reason that uh, a lot of studios would like to do CTR tests is, uh, first of all, it saves a lot of time and efforts in the testing and development process because you don't need to create a build, you don't need to upload it to the store, you don't need to fix bugs, you don't need to integrate SDKs and wait for reviews, you simply create a gameplay video. When you're starting to think about the CTR test, you simply need to understand what is going to be entered in the 30 second and 15 second creatives uh, and only work on that and you're thinking about creating this prototype, you need to kind of divide it into steps. The first three to five seconds, you need to make sure that the game is fully understandable in the first three to five seconds. Maybe a fail moment can help here because it does help a lot of uh, players understand the controls and the winning more options of uh, a prototype or a video. And then move forward from there, making perhaps one or two levels. You can edit and cut it to make sure that it's very uh, nice and understandable. And then you can submit it. But uh, the process can be the other way around. Simply create a, a gameplay video, uh, send it to the publishing manager, receive his feedback, and then start working on the, on the actual creative that you'd like to test. That's great. Really, really practical advice. Thank you. And, and actually, I, you know, we've got a couple more questions, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going if that's all right. If, you, if, you, if you're okay, sure, let's do it. Um, so uh, uh, one of our anonymous attendees has said... Um, has it, is it a little, is it getting difficult to bring down the CPI since November? Um, I think that question was asked at a previous talk as well, since November, the cost of CPI. Um, have you got any observations on that? Well, I didn't see a very uh, uh, big trend in CPI over the past few months. Obviously towards the end of years, CPMs are changing uh, and uh, it can, it might inflect CPI, but in, in my point of view, it didn't uh, ha had any effect. We do see a lot of success and potential games that, of studios that sent us and pub, uh, started testing their games for CTR and CPI. Uh, so no, I don't see a specific uh, uh, trend of increased CPI. To be honest, I do see a trend of decreasing CPI okay. over the past month or so, uh, but maybe it's because of, we, you know, talented studios are very innovative and they have good concepting. Um, and, you know, if you're, if you're prototyping something that is similar to something else, uh, so you're 
you're at the starting point, which is not good because you want to give something fresh to the players, something that they haven't seen before. And this can help you uh, achieve lower CPI if you're creating something that, you know, a player didn't see something uh, similar in his thinking. Maybe this is the same game that I've already saw a million times the ad to, and now he's seeing something new and can help reduce the CPI. That's great. Thank you. That's interesting. Well, there's also a couple more questions here. Uh, I should say um, somebody has asked the question. This is Burke has asked, uh, can we see your slides after the presentation? Um, I, I will also just remind everyone that we're recording all the talks as well. So if you want to replay what you've just seen here and, and go back through um, Shai's presentation, then uh, come in about 24 hours time, uh, you'll be able to find this morning's recordings all on the um, uh, all on the meet to match platform links there, and we'll also email you with the links to those. But but um, Shai, may, maybe uh, I don't know if you're going to go on our Discord. Perhaps if you if people want to qu ask you questions about your slides, perhaps you can help them out there as well. But no uh, yeah, do they can, by the way, they can also reach out by the by the email. But but uh, feel free to reach out over Discord, and I'm happy to share more information and the slides themselves. Perfect. That's perfect. But yes, but everyone, please do please do rewatch this presentation. So I think we'll just take one more question before we go. I have our, our panel is uh, assembling there. Um, actually, uh, someone has just suggested here that um, and asked the question: uh, Is there any protection to stop a publisher just uh, going ahead and, and producing their own version of the game if you share your um, share your ideas? I noticed in the chat as well, someone's asked that: Do we need NDA signed? Uh, I know obviously when an idea is a good idea, everyone you know other iterations of it will no doubt emerge but what's your recommendation there shy for people revealing what they're working on is there a good practice there so that's a great question and uh, if we're going back to the slide you need to choose the right publisher for you and you need to make sure this publisher has the the, the, the ability to work together with you and um, uh, i know that the, some of the studios are concerned that you know submitting something to a publisher and then uh, someone else will try and do it or the publisher itself uh, but if you have good communication, if you have good partnership and a very transparent partnership with the publisher, you know, that you can very quickly understand uh, how this publisher works and uh, have the confidence that you can share uh, early prototypes or uh, ideas with the publisher and the publisher will not, you know, say no, but then do it themselves. Uh, a point on that uh, is that uh, some of the hyper casual games are very similar to each other and right. you might submit something and then see another different publisher or another totally different studio doing the same and you say oh my gosh they copied me but maybe they didn't because you know things are very similar to each other uh, but again if you have a publisher that you trust and you build a relationship with you very quickly understand that this publisher will not uh, want to harm you by the opposite you know if you have a good idea why not work uh, with the studio me as a publisher why not work with the studio to get right. this game very quickly to the top, top charts and enjoy the uh, the fruits of their partnerships yeah absolutely and i think most of the, the the publishers that we've seen today are very reputable obviously crazy labs have got a great reputation i should think that the as you point out though a lot of the thing about hyper casual games is that the mechanic is often very simple and so many ideas will emerge at the same time using the same kind of you know idea um do you know what i'm gonna take there's one more question left and i hope I'll, i i won't be in trouble with the stage manager if i take this question because uh we, we might, i know the panel are here waiting but we might as well work through this this final question so um someone's asked Shai, what is your top tip to get better retention and lifetime value and they've hinted that there might be something to do with live ops there that's a whole topic track in itself but what's your kind of a hot take on that you're right. It's a, it's a it's a topic of itself, and I think that uh, Michal, our VP Live Ops, uh, had had a recent talk about how to maintain a game during Live Ops, and and you know it's hard for me to dive into that in just a few seconds. But uh, if you can break it out, you need to break it out into two things: the onboarding itself. You need to make sure that when you're uh, the first player is onboarding, the first levels are easy to understand. Um, and it's very addictive and it does, they don't fail very quickly. You want them to get a, a, a satisfying experience and not you know, something that they're going to be frustrated with. And then later on, it's a very, very big uh, uh, task where you need to continuously uh, A-B test and uh, do a lot of uh, optimization to maintain the, uh, the players uh, and keep them enga engaged as much as possible. But you know, feel free to reach out to me and then we can have a, a very long conversation about that so I can help you with your next prototype and how to maintain and increase LTV as well. 
That's perfect. And I should say that if our uh, audience is interested in live ops and its effect on um, uh, on LTV and so on, we actually have a whole track about live ops. If you've missed it, you can, re again, rewatch that recording later on as well. So look, I'm going to wrap it up there and say, Shai, thank you very much for, for that really great presentation. Round of applause. Uh, and uh, yeah, and hopefully um, if there's anyone in the audience with more questions, they can catch you in another platform, but uh, we'll move on now. So thanks again and um, have a great afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Bye.